Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and <laughs> I've got unlimited power, unlimited power thanks to this power up and now I will crush all of my foes who called me an albino egg. Oh god, it's war off. Oh dear, this is a bit awkward now. I'm sorry, I'm going to go back in my box now. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are eight incredible video game powers that you barely got to use. Number eight, the flamethrower. Zombies ate my neighbours. When confronted by the hordes of the undead, you're gonna want a trusty pipe or ten in order to stab through their various squishy parts, but for those looking for a more hands-off experience, might I suggest today's a la carte menu of char-grilled zombie? It pairs deliciously with a maniacal laugh, so I'm told. Well, this delish dish can indeed be yours should you explore the digital realms of the brilliantly silly Zombies Ate My Neighbors on the SNES, whereby a secret flamethrower can indeed be found on level 22 of the game. In order to get to this secret area, you'll have need to have found the skeleton key in level 15, but even when you approach the secret object marker, don't leave the area quite yet. Many people think that this secret icon is the sole reason for this area, but if you approach the wall to your right, move about a bit until you hear a little bleep, then huzzah, you'll have found the one and only flamethrower in the entire game. Now, This weapon absolutely tanks enemies, turning you into the Lord of Barbecue based death, but you'll need to be sparing with the flames as you only get one of them in the entire game and there is no way to refill it. Still, for a while, you'll pretty much the hottest thing going in this title. Number 7. The Black Dragon Blade – Ninja Gaiden Black original version. In a game as crushingly difficult as Ninja Gaiden Black, players are going to be looking everywhere they can for weapons to even the score against the tide of pain coming their way. Luckily though, this game does offer some solutions to the problem of getting your spine kicked out of your skin in the form of the Ninja Dog Mode and the Black Dragon Blade. Now, The former is not something that players should really be aiming for, seeing as this is the game's frankly insulting Easy Mode, which will trigger if the player dies so many times that the title gets a bit embarrassed for you and asks if you want to tone things down a notch. It even rewards you with a pink bow to show the world that you are indeed a uh, ninja dog. Well, nuts to that, right? Let's show them this mutt's might. And to do this, you're going to want to aim for the Black Dragon Blade, the most powerful weapon in the game that will make bosses look like they're made out of paper for how easily you slice through them. Using this beast is almost its own easy mode as you'll rip and tear so hard that the Doom Slayer might even lawyer up. But there's one issue that presents itself, and that's the fact that this costs 50 scarabs, which are rare items that you will only literally have have enough of in the stage before the final boss, meaning that while you are now no longer a ninja dog and are making others your bitch, you can only do so for about 15 minutes with this sword. Woof, indeed. Thankfully, the re-release of the game allowed you to carry the sword over into New Game Plus, but in the original version, well, tough luck, mate. Number 6. The Apple of Eden – The Assassin's Creed Franchise While you might think that diving from rooftops and somehow landing unscathed thanks to a thin mound of hay might imply that the assassins that you take control of in the Assassin's Creed franchise are somewhat superheroes of their time, they are at the end of the day merely human. As such, they can be controlled, manipulated, and even consumed by the raw power of the Apple of Eden, an overwhelming source of untold power that crops up again and again in the franchise, usually in the hands of somebody evil looking to exploit its abilities for world domination. However, at specific and altogether short bursts, the player is also able to wield this magic apple and it is utterly glorious. Sending out a massive area of effect burst, the player is able to obliterate the minds of anyone unlucky enough to be in the vicinity, turning you into a walking, talking, do not mess with me friend sign that will microwave your enemies' brains like popcorn. Yet, as is expected from such a powerful item, the usage of it is limited by having either the player's health be drained when wielding it, or by having characters in charge of it only take part in the narrative for short bursts. Still, it's easy to feel like a god when wielding the fruit of his garden. Number 5. Excalibur 2 – Final Fantasy IX Who doesn't love a good sequel? Well, for Final Fantasy IX players, the follow-up to the original Sword of Legend Excalibur almost gave them reason to throw the bloody thing back to the Lady of the Lake in anger as trying to unlock this overpowered letter opener was an exercise in teeth-grinding frustration. For starters, while this weapon truly is the best in the game for Steiner and is infused with all manner of holy power, it can only be located in the final dungeon of the game Memoria, meaning that the actual 
time that you spend using it is minimal to say the least. Yet, to even get a chance to barely use this weapon, you're gonna need to haul ass, seeing as you only have 12 hours to reach said location, defeat the boss guarding it, and then search for it near a pillar. This means that you'll be skipping every non-essential battle, rushing through the plot, and otherwise missing a ton of what makes this game great, all for about 30 minutes of overpowered fun. And things get even worse on the PAL version of this game, because it ran at a slower frame rate, yet still had an internal clock that kept pace, meaning that you'd need to do all of this in 10 hours instead. Truly not worth it if you ask me. Number 4. Enchanted Gladius Eternal Darkness – Sanity's Requiem In a survival horror like Eternal Darkness, which just loves to mess with the player at every turn, you're going to need to be looking for something weighty to not only defend yourself, but also act as an anchor on reality from time to time. Unfortunately, Eternal Darkness isn't one to dole out a ton of useful weapons, and in a true FU fashion, only gives you access to arguably the most powerful weapon, the Enchanted Gladius, come the very end of the game. The weapon itself is genuinely amazing, and fused as it is with all sorts of arcane cane wizardry and can be thrown at enemies to inflict the sort of massive damage that esports commentators would have a meltdown over. But getting the weapon, however, is a drawn-out challenge, requiring you to solve puzzles with one character, collect items with another, and can only be used by a third character and only in a location that has five enemies in it. That's right, just five enemies. That's all you get to use this amazing weapon on, and this figure might indeed be less if you've already defeated these enemies during your prior time in the mansion. Good, glad to see that all that effort was worth it. Number 3. Unlimited Power Hawk – Dragon Age 2 Now, we've all got that one friend who likes to over-exaggerate when it comes to telling a story, where they motion every action, draw out every conversation, because they think of themselves as the bard of the bull, finally telling that epic tale of how Jimmy rode a shopping trolley into a lake because he was such a mad lad or something like that. And players will get this experience firsthand upon playing Dragon Age 2, courtesy of Varric, our lovable but rather unreliable narrator. Now, Varric is being interrogated by the Templar Order to find the whereabouts of Hawk, the original protagonist of the first game. And seeing that he's not one to play ball, he starts to spin a yarn about how utterly overpowered Hawk was thanks to all of the legends about them being told by the populace. And the player actually gets to take out this warrior of legend for a spin. With regenerating health, overpowered attacks, and the ability to knock even massive enemies on their asses, it's akin to playing as Darth Vader in the opening of The Force Unleashed. But alas, much like with Burnt Bacon Face Man, we have to relinquish our new powers and start again as Varric is called out for manipulating the truth. Shame. Number 2. The Thunderclap – Rise of the Tomb Raider Now, On paper, the Thunderclap sounds like the perfect weapon for the modern Raider of Tombs, a fully maxed out pump-action shotgun coated in a very modest, solid gold that pretty much just one-shots everything you're pointed at. That sounds brilliant, right? Well, there's a slight problem with this overpowered pump action, and it comes from the fact that you only get this beast from completing the game 100%, meaning that you've quite literally done everything this game has to offer, and seeing as it's rewarded to you the moment you hit this milestone, you've got nothing to use it on besides the random guard patrols and some wildlife. It surely does take the spice out of your shells when all you can do is walk around the world like the worst and yet most ostentatious vet putting down animals with more force than would ever be necessary, and with no ability to carry this across into a new adventure via New Game Plus, this absolute power is absolutely fleeting. And number 1. The Fierce Deity Mask – Majora's Mask Oh, Fierce Deity Mask, how I love thee! The ability to don this mask and make an absolute mockery of Majora's Mask come the close of this outstanding Legend of Zelda title is a thing of true beauty, as this paper mache looking item will let you mash the final hurdle of this experience like he was made of wet bread. Boosting your attack power to unprecedented levels and giving you access to the Fierce Deity Sword, Link becomes an awakened avatar of pain for anyone standing in your way. It's it's a shame, therefore, that the only things that you can use this on are the bosses themselves, and seeing as you're at the end of the game, that means there's only one left. Now, fans quickly found loopholes to get this mask early, but even then, its only use is in boss rooms and fishing areas, strangely, meaning that while you can absolutely embarrass these big bads, doing so as intended means that you only get one short but overwhelmingly powerful fight. It's a taste of power that leaves us wanting more. And there we go, those were eight incredible video game powers that you barely got to use. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules, you can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, that's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of work. It'd be great to see you over there, friend.
But before I go, I just want to say one thing. We all have within us an incredible power that many of us barely use, but I urge you to do so, and that is just being kind to yourself. Sometimes we can be way too hard on ourselves, and trust me, you're not a bad person. You're a good person who deserves love, happiness, and respect like every other human being on this planet. So do yourself a favor, take the foot off the gas every once in a while, and just be kind to yourself, because you bloody well deserve it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.